With Bayonetta and Valentine's Day behind us, we now prep for Cardboard and Kirby. But before we can get there, it's time for Comment Force 49. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here. Thank you, as always, for your questions, your comments, your concerns, your feedback, and your fun ideas. There's some sweet comments today, and we're going to share them with you in a second. First, though, because I forgot the last two or three shows, I have to ask Gabe how his week was. Gabe, how was your week? <laughs> My week was decent. Kind of wish we had, you know, a couple of games earlier than we got them, but now it's time to play Bayonetta, Zach. You're playing the second one. I'm playing the first one. Having a good time with that. And you saw Black Panther already. I played Black Panther already. Yeah. Now we need to flip-flop. Basically, yeah. Black Panther's really cool, by the way. Let, let's one-two switch into I see Black Panther, you play Black Panther. Okay, that was a good snap. Thank you. That was a real good snap. Just to let you know, next week is our 50th anniversary so we would like you in the comments to leave any favorite moments from comment force that you have since next week will be our 50th episode also we have a very special treat for you next weekend a very cool treat that ties into comment force 50 and the one year anniversary of switch which is fast approaching so get ready for that hold on to your joy con it's gonna be awesome first though Let's get into the comments. Derek Delisle says, People keep saying the Switch has so many great games. It does. Odyssey, Zelda, Mario Kart. There's a lot of decent indie games too, but when you go to a Walmart, Target, or GameStop, the wall of, like, quote, real Switch games, AAA, AA, whatever you call them, your regular new $60 games, that's where it's lacking hugely, in my opinion. Go on the eShop, put the filter on for $49.99 to $59.99, and there's like 14 games. Mario, Zelda, Rabbits, WWE, NBA, Xenoblade 2, Disgaea, Farm Sim, Doom, Splatoon. There's not many. Kirby and Bayonetta adds two more, but the Switch is becoming this indie mobile device, and I don't like that. The amount of indie titles to quote real games is like 100 to 1. I've been wanting to spend $60 on a real game. I kind of want Doom, but I can get it for 20 on Xbox One. This is definitely... A reality right now. What do you think about it, Gabe? I feel like my views are on this are going to be a little bit skewed. I don't go to Walmart. I don't go to Target. Like, these aren't things I do. If I want a game, I'm buying it online or buying it digitally. Like, I understand that America as a whole, right? A lot of people still consume their media in that way. Just like, hey, go to Walmart, pick it up. But I know you don't. I know everybody we know generally right. doesn't. But but just because you don't go to Walmart doesn't mean this issue disappears no no I mean, like I, you yeah, said even if you sure. go to eShop and you change that that filter and, and and frankly i still think that whether we want to believe it or not so much of shopping happens in brick and mortar and it is very true that like there are a a cream of the crop group of switch games as he says and there are a ton of amazing indies fee being added this week i, I want to shout out to that is it fee or is it fey because we've been calling it's, it fey we've been calling it fey but it's absolutely fee I, okay. I learned that recently yeah okay um but but yeah like this is eShop physical the issue remains like if you want quote 60 dollar quote real games there's not many options once you run through like the main nintendo franchises i mean there's there's a few he didn't mention la noir i don't think he mentioned skyrim i mean there's more out there that i mean I, if you I don't I mean, know it, that it gets i mean if you absolutely want to spend sixty dollars on something, like I don't know, go play one of those games that you haven't played. I mean, and their releases are ports. But yeah, this is definitely a problem. Uh, yeah. Dark Souls is coming, Kirby is coming, Fire Emblem coming this year. I mean, there's there's things on the horizon. Donkey Kong is another one that you're going to be able to pay sixty dollars for. Uh, but I, I I've made my stance on this clear. To me, games are games, and like the price point or where I'm getting it, that doesn't matter to me. I want the experience to be good. So Yeah, and I very much agree with that. I think that's totally true. The game can be 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 as long as it's phenomenal. And, and on, on the contrary, just because it's 60 doesn't mean it's going to be worth it in any way. I do get the sentiment, though. I do feel like it is time that the Switch shows us what's up for the rest of the year. Because if we're going to just add you know, Donkey Kong port, Hyrule Warriors port, Kirby, Mario Tennis, and I think it's really time that we see what third-party brick-and-mortar retail games, and not just putting out Overcooked and Flint Hook and, and, you know, Rocket League on store shelves. I love those games. Those are all amazing games that I would vouch for in any arena. But I don't think that solves things. Just, just shoving more on the store shelves, you don't want this to start looking like shovelware. And I know that it's not. Gabe, you know that it's not. Most people listening know that it's not. But from an outsider perspective, it's kind of what happened to the Wii, and I really don't want that to happen to the Switch. Yeah, hopefully the popularity of the Switch and uh, 
Nintendo's seemingly learned behavior kind of helps and makes things better. Uh, but I feel like we've talked enough about that. Uh, we all yes. want more $60 third-party games. Um, let's see. A, a Ad Ad Gum Scott? Right? Or a Dad Gum Scott? Sure. Either one of those. <laughs> says, uh, to the price point, I was looking at an uh, Imagine X. Imagine Me- X, yeah. Yeah, ima- yeah, I was going to say. It's just the word looks weird to me. Imagine X Megazord, and it's forty nine ninety nine. The Batman robot that only lights up is ninety nine ninety nine. I think the price points are going to hinder it. Uh, aren't going to hinder it to parents that already have a Switch. It will take one kid at a daycare to bring it in and sell it to the rest of the parents. That's one thing Robo I never thought about. Labo, yeah. I, 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 you know this probably, but... I don't know if everybody knows. Kids' toys are just always expensive. Like, mm-hmm. Lego sets are like $30, $40, right? For, for the like nice big ones. I mean, if you want big ones, you're talking way more. I oh, mean, really? W- yeah, you know, just because I have younger brothers that I've, I've sort of gone through all this with, Lego is so expensive. And we're not saying that Labo cardboard is on the same caliber as, like, Lego. But in general, kids' toys are pricey. And marketing it in that way, you know, does put it in a different, I guess, price structure and maybe from that standpoint eighty dollars isn't a lot you know from a gaming perspective like okay how much game are we getting here it, it's it's a lot but you know I'm, I'm looking on amazon right now okay we got episode eight kylo ren's tie fighter eighty dollars episode eight star destroyer 160 dollars pose x-wing eighty dollars and, and you know these are these are ships that you can buy on amazon um and and those are just lego sets now obviously labo is nowhere near this complicated but in, in another way, it's, it's more complicated. It's offering you an electronic application for your creation. And yeah, as a game pricey, as a kid's toy in comparison to these other things, like like a dadgum Scott mentioned, cheap. Or at least, at least right in line. Yeah, I feel like the only reservation people would have is that, hey, cardboard. Like, that's the only thing. But yeah, yeah you're right. It, it makes sense. Um, younger people and kids... Toys, yeah, notoriously expensive. The other thing I will point out, because I know somebody's going to say it, and it is a very valid point, you don't have to have a $300 pre-purchase to play with the Imaginex Megazord or the Batman robot, and you do with the Switch. So that does need to be taken into account. (laughs) And also, before anyone makes fun of me, the reason I couldn't say Imaginex is because I don't know what that is. I've never even seen that word in my life. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) Gabe, this might appeal to you more, though. Lucy Ward says, me and my Valentine have been playing Snake Pass... Gabe, you got to find you a girl that wants to play Snake Pass. That's the last thing I need. I can just imagine Cooperative Snake Pass being the most frustrating thing in the world. Like, stop falling. Hold on. Grab tighter. Yeah, because Snake Pass alone isn't already the most frustrating thing. (laughs) Now that I'm looking at this, I do wonder if this is some sort of innuendo that I just completely missed. But (laughs) I'm going to take it at face value and Uh, say that Lucy and her Valentine were playing Snake Pass and having a jolly PG friendly time. Arnaz Juggings said, I can't believe it, but I can admit when I'm wrong and, uh, and impressed. If you even look at the motorbike alone, that's basically an endless Mario Kart 9 prototype, and it's deeper than expected. All the games are, they're really just justify the prize for this, and I, and I can admit I was proven wrong. This might turn out good and way better than 1-2-Switch. In addition, the garage is so endless in possibilities, I might be crazy, but I am sold on cardboard. Hmm. There's a lot of people that were issuing this sentiment of that, Hey, they are they are really impressed, and I kind of like his comparison to One Two Switch. You think about what that provided, and then you know Labo the Variety Pack. I mean, I would rather get the Labo Variety Pack, I think, than One Two Switch. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. There's an argument to be made there. I'm not saying I'd rather have One Two Switch. I just that's not something I've given any thought. I do think that the garage adds a lot, and I hope Nintendo divulges more about that and the the depths of its systems um and i think that should definitely be a marketing point as they move towards launch in april of like hey yeah there's all this stuff but you can make your own um and there's a comment later on that addresses that further but glad you're impressed arnas let's hope that this rewards our new warm fuzzy feelings i do think it's interesting about how maybe that track creator has something to do with mario kart 9 that's that's a topic for another day but I would love Mario Kart Maker or at least a track editor in Mario Kart 9. I think that takes things to another level. Uh, But you know what takes things to an even higher level? Legend of Zelda Battle Royale. Aldi Burnage 135 says, You know what would be so good and be so easy to make? 
Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Battle Royale as a spinoff. You already have the glider, the loot system, mounts, runes, could be its gimmick like Fortnite's building, unique melee-centric combat, climbing, climate stuff, plus physics. All they need to do is set up servers and maybe create a new map. It makes so much money and be great to release alongside the paid online. Why aren't they doing this? <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> idea for sure. Yeah, the only, I mean, the reason I laugh is Nintendo is so anti what everybody else is doing. Like, I don't think there's any way that they would ever do this. Someone did point out that Splatoon 2 Salmon Run is definitely a direct response to the popularity of horde modes and cooperative Definitely. shooters. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but so, so, okay, so we can expect this in the next console. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that Zelda's ever used um, for, 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 like, mainline Zelda for multiplayer, no way. Um, wait, 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 no, hold on. The next one's going to have it. The next mainline, yeah. The next mainline Zelda will have multiplayer. Breath of the Wild almost had multiplayer when it was originally like announced for for the Wii U, like Zelda Wii U. Competitive uh, multiplayer? No, not competitive. I didn't say competitive. Okay, I guess that's what I was referring to. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, yeah, I don't think we're ever like like slashing against Link too. No, 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 no. But Anuma said that like the Wii U version of, of Zelda, like he was thinking of an open world that you could play with your friends. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's ever going to be competitive. No. I do think that the systems are there and, and ripe for this, Aldi. Sadly, I don't think it happens, but it would be super cool. I don't know how well a melee battle royale works, though. Just I mean, everyone there, charging at each other. There's melee and, and battle royales. Plus, you have, like, a bow and arrow and stuff for Zelda. Yeah, I think you'd have to definitely expand upon the ranged weaponry. But it would be super cool. I mean, a lot of people are on this, let's have Nintendo do battle royale. I, I predict second half of 2018 sees so many battle royale clones... Uh, in in both major AAA franchises and from the indie spectrum, yeah, um, battle royale might be dangerous to the game industry. I want to leave that with this. Um, Lord Yoshi says they should make a Super Mario sixty four DLC where they would bring it back three stages like Bomb on Battlefield, Womp's Fortress, and either Princess's uh, Secret Slide or Dire Dire Docks. Like if you agree, and fifty nine people liked it, so fifty nine people agreed. Yeah, a lot of the, in fact, almost all of the responses to what would you like to see from Mario Odyssey DLC since the producer said he's open to it was uh, stuff from the past, like remade levels from 64 or Sunshine or Galaxy. Those are the kingdoms people want, not new ideas, uh, but more so give us Isle Delfino, give us Mario 64 Bomb on Battlefield, uh, give us some of the gems from Galaxy. I think that would be super cool. It, it's I'm not going to say it's a low effort, but it, it it seems like it would be totally feasible. Yeah, that's true, right? You already have, like, the layout. like, And to see it, see it redone kind of in modern style, utilizing Mario Odyssey's mechanics, would be super awesome. Agreed. And, you know, people love their Nintendo nostalgia, so feed it. Uh, imagine, like, a, a season pass that offered 64 DLC, Sunshine DLC, and Galaxy DLC. That would be great, and that would sell a ton. Print your money, Nintendo. $30, three eras of Mario, all in Odyssey. Make Come on. Happen. Yeah. I mean, I'd be fine with New Kingdoms as well. I think that's brilliant. But I, I do think that people definitely chase after um, things that they remember and seeing them in beautiful HD would be awesome. So whether it's going to be... Uh, there's some cool new ide ideas for New Kingdoms in the comments as well, but this was the, the most common sentiment. Uh, Andy Marshall asks a, a question that I want us both to answer, Gabe. Do you want the Switch to last 10 years, or would you rather have a new console? I'd rather have a new console. So let, let's make this a real cut-and-dry thing. You get Switch for 10 years, or Switch for 5, and then a new console. New console. It's not even a question for me. And is that just because of the hype of, of something new, another idea, you can still play the Switch, etc.? No, because I believe whatever the next console is will also be hybrid. Right, and then mm. you would imagine that we don't have to worry about sub 1080p resolutions on the go. Uh, my hope would be at least 1440p, uh, you know, per year games, right? Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. More power so that there could be a little bit more parity with other platforms, things like that. Like, I don't, I don't see why this. I, I don't know. People want consoles to last a long time. I'm not one of those people. I like new, exciting things. Me too. But when I thought about this, consider Xbox 360 and PS3 with 10 year, nearly 10-year life cycles, and the quality of game that was coming out at the end of those, I'm not saying you can't have that quality early on, as Nintendo has directly proved with Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and more, but we might get some of the juiciest Nintendo titles ever in year 8, 9, 10, 
you know, at that point, you are going to get another Zelda, you are going to get another Mario, you are going to get another Mario Kart, you are going to get a full-on Smash Brothers, and they would take such advantage of the system, it would be so perfected at that point, that's kind of enticing. And as much as I like new, it, it saves money. I mean, I still think there's going to be iterations of the Switch, so I, I think regardless, you're going to get either a Switch Mini or a Switch Mega or a Switch Shiny, whatever. And, and I would be sad to not have that, like, whiz bang wow moment of opening something brand new but at the end of the day i, I get them for the games and you're eight nine ten right the mm-hmm. reason why the those amazing games happen mm-hmm. is because people just get so used to the infrastructure right like they're able to untap like literally every ounce of power that that console has right i feel like they're already doing that with switch because like it, it's really? old, it's it, yeah, dude, it's older hardware. Like this Tegra chip, like it's not a new chip whatsoever. People are familiar with it. Like there's nothing to uncover here. Okay, that's that's a valid point and an interesting topic. Do you think then if they iterate on the Switch? Because because okay, when I say com- new console, I'm talking completely new. Like not like oh a, a Switch 2.0, but like a freaking Nintendo swappy. Like it's something completely different. Well, I don't, I don't care what the new console is. It, it could be just a variation on this. Okay, because that's not... Like, I don't think that counts. I think they're saying straight up, like, a wholly new system that doesn't run the same games at all. I'll, I'll take a wholly new system that doesn't run the same games at all. I'll take that. All right. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what you what you think. I think that's a good, good question. But uh, let's move on to Raging Red. He says, or she says, or Bulbasaur says, different color, <laughs> different color or theme docks is what we need. Would you buy a different color dock or a theme dock like you'd buy a Joy-Con set if it was cool? Yeah. I need a, I need another dock. I almost, uh, a, a couple of times now, I've almost just ran a Best Buy and get, got a third party, like really cheap one, just because I want to just have one in the living room because I usually play Switch and Capture Switch here in my office. But, you know, at times I have people over and we want to play things. Yes, I can just move the dock over, but then I have to like unplug it from my capture card and I don't know, move HDMI. I'd rather just have it a completely separate one. So I need, I do need a new dock. Uh, so a different <laughs> c- color one would be cool. I personally think the idea of needing another dock is just downright silly. But I know a lot of people. It's convenience, share that. man. It's just yeah. convenience. At, at ninety dollars? No. I do think, like, say Pokemon, they came out with a super sweet Pokemon dock, and it wasn't just like, oh, like tape this sticker on or it, it didn't look tacky but say it like had like etched in pokemon kind of how like the pro controllers uh really work nicely with that or it was like a clear theme if it was a straight up color i'm not on it i don't i don't need a blue dock a red dock um you I also think it, you also don't play video games in any other room in your house sure but i'm just saying straight up like uh, i love special edition consoles so if you're not going to give us... I, I think instead what I want to say is that they need backplates for the Switch. And I don't think they ever sell them separately, but I would much rather have a different themed Switch than the dock. Because the yeah. dock then just sits there. Yeah. Meh. The Toast Legacy comes in uh, with a, an interesting point. He says it a little loudly, uh, but here we go. No, no, no. It is not the perfect platform. He's talking about... Fortnite on Switch. There is literally no reason for it to be portable. We would get so many people using crappy internet to play the game. Please stop saying Fortnite would be perfect for the Switch. And and the sentiment here is that a lot of poor connections and a lot of issues because people would all be using crappy on the go Wi-Fi and or you know at a distance where it's not the same direct connection you expect from most players on PC or PS4, or Xbox One. Yeah. I- <laughs> I'm never playing Fortnite on a mobile connection, like my a hotspot. No, I'm not doing that. But like, I would love to play it from like the restroom or the couch. I think my Wi-Fi is good enough that I, I, my connection wouldn't be crappy. So it, it makes sense, right? What he says, sure. Yeah, I I, I don't it, disagree with the sentiment. I do wonder if Nintendo ever uh, ever tries this out. If they ever test the waters of a you know, of relying on Wi-Fi for something. I mean, personally, I think there's no reason why they can't do it and just, you know, encourage everyone to play docks because, again, all the other consoles are docked. So if Fortnite functions best docked, I think what Toast Legacy is getting at, though, is what if the experience is ruined by players who have poor connections and that just sort of sullies the entire experience, which I think is valid. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is a valid point. That One that I didn't think of, to be honest. Yeah, and and... A number of people that replied to Toast Legacy said this much, like, hey, like that's an that's a point. One point for you, Toast Legacy. Good work. Yes. 
<laughs> oh god why do i get the weird names aim o s i don't know dude theer amos theer let's go with that almost there okay <laughs> 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 I'm the worst with names. Integrated message system, voice chat, party system, no more friend codes. This is the wish list for what would make the online worth it after the delay. And this is everyone's. Everyone wants voice chat, number one, party system, number two, and then some variety of messaging, no more friend codes, and virtual console. But I was surprised to see that above virtual console, the main thing people want is voice chat and party systems. Is this anything? Is this what you like? Would you do you care about any of this stuff? You, I don't, I, do, I don't, but I never partake in the onboard chat, but tons of people do. I do think that one thing we overlooked was no more friend codes. I think that Nintendo absolutely should introduce a profile system for their online 100%. I don't know if they will, but to me, if they say they've been putting work in, that would be them putting work in. No more friend codes and a legit party system and a messaging system where you could hook up with your friends and. Just hang out and then play games. Why not bring the Switch into the decade? Not the year, the decade. <laughs> I'm all about hooking up with friends, though. So, yeah, why not? <laughs> all right. Uh, no, Gabe, what's your what's your Switch username if they – is it just Switch Force Gabe? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Sadly, uh, sadly ours are a little obvious. <laughs> Switch Force Gabe and Switch Force Zach. Yeah. Uh, Switch Speedster, though, isn't as – as confident he says i'm just worried the switch's triple a's third party support is dry right now and it seems like the switch's power is the reason why they can't come to the console slash handheld the best the switch can get is indies let's hope by the next direct slash e3 we can get some true third party support we were promised from the beginning of the year <laughs> i i dark souls is coming like last year we got doom and la noir and, you're, and, you're talking about like one or two games though no, I'm not. I, I was about Doom, to keep. Noir. I was about to keep mentioning more games. Skyrim. Okay, okay. Okay. Wolfenstein is coming. We just got Bayonetta, and Bayonetta is now first party for all intents and purposes. It, it, and we got NBA. We got FIFA. They might not be like the games you want, but third party's here, in one way or another. In That's, a small way. Is it? Is okay, it small? In, in a year? In a year, you can count the games on like four hands. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I absolutely think this is something that needs to be addressed, and I'm right there with you, Switch Speedster, that I hope the next Direct Slash E3 shows that, hey, there's like 50 third-party games coming the rest of the year. There was like 50 last year. 50 $60 boxed games? Oh, I didn't say $60 boxed games. I said 50 third-party third yeah, no, games. No, no, I'm not talking about Sonic, digital Because Sonic, Sonic Mania is third-party, right? Yeah, but I'm not I, – that – we're at a point where that needs to not be in, in this discussion. Dragon Those Ball. games are great. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to keep mentioning games. All right. We'll see if you can get past like 13, 14. Uh, no, no, no. I, I don't care to. No, I mean, but it's obviously an, an issue, right? And I think Nintendo knows about it. The Switch is sold well enough that this should not be a problem. So it's going to be critical that they establish second half 2018. Hey, we may not be exactly equivalent with PS4 and Xbox One support. In fact, we're never going to be. But we're trying to get as close as we can. And that means... What percentage of, of multi-platform games do you think the Switch should have where this would be calmed down? Because right now it's sitting in about, like, single digits. Yeah. Can, can I add a little bit of perspective? Yeah. Okay. The Switch hasn't been on retail shelves for uh, 12 months yet, right? Sure. Okay. We knew going into this that... Third party was going to be hesitant to jump on board with the Switch because of what happened with Wii U, right? Am I, what, is what I'm saying so far fair? 100%. Okay. So a lot of these publishers, even back then, said out loud in like interviews, hey, we're going to wait and see how this thing does first. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's doing great. The companies see, oh, it's doing great. Let's start making these games. These games are probably still being made. Like, they're a long time hasn't passed like some of these games are prop like we're i think this does get fixed i think the games are being ported over i think third party really steps it up this year i just think that not enough time has passed for that to just like be overnight like fixed basically these games need to be made mm -hmm. companies are seeing nintendo successful so yeah it's coming i think i hope yeah i mean and i mean that's all i can say about that i, I do think that this happens because 
a console's not this successful without third party wanting to be on board. I, I, I am seeking twenty five percent. I want I want more. I'm on like thirty percent. Forty. I mean that would be ideal, but if we're at like six right now, twenty five yeah. would be a, a four times jump, four hundred percent increase. Sure. We can move on though to Pedro Lopez. Who says the valid uh, the valid points in this video aside, repeatedly saying that Nintendo historically doesn't do price drops on their titles is false. Nintendo selects for the same exact game with a price drop, which is I found very convenient for fun games like Pikmin 3. I'm not saying that Switch games should already have Nintendo Select packages. I'm just saying that they exist. Although I do think Nintendo Select version of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze would be appropriate. Yeah, I hope people didn't think that we meant that these games literally never get price drops like we know they do we're aware of nintendo yeah. selects but we're just talking grand scheme of things these like games don't get price drops on nintendo um platforms for a while right usually yeah and i think like the the, the only real answer here is it's just too too new mm-hmm. and you know for better or worse the ports are coming early so that they're going to be 60 because they can sell at 60 because a they weren't really played by that many people on Wii U and b you'd start to devalue your system if you're releasing your your first party titles as you know forty dollar thirty dollar entries. Um, but yeah, Nintendo Select is a great program. I don't think Switch sees it for a while, but it it would be nice at some point. I did, and have I do the, think I think ports would fit you know perfectly in there. I had this thought the other day, Zach, and I don't know why I was thinking about this, but I was. When the Wii U came out, do you remember the launch lineup more or less if I mentioned a couple of games? Mm-hmm. All right. So Batman, right? Arkham, what was it? City came out. Mm-hmm. We also had what I believe was Assassin's Creed 3 at the time. Correct? It sounds right. Okay. Were those games $60? They had to be. Okay. So then my question becomes, why weren't people complaining about this then? Because, because there was there was a bunch of ports for, for yeah, Wii U. But, but but here's the difference. Okay, Assassin's Creed Three, just to get real granular, released on October 30th for PS3 and Xbox 360, and it released on Wii U in November. Okay. So I, I think that's the issue. You know, a, a couple of months is one thing. A couple of years. What about Batman? I can I can look Batman up for you. I mean, you know, like L.A. Noir. First of all, L.A. Noir wasn't even sixty, which is. Okay. Yeah, it's fifty dollars. Yeah, which is nice of them, um, because that's a that is a port that was like newly brought to all consoles, right? A new remaster. Mm-hmm. Um, I similar to what Dark Souls is going to be. Yeah, so that those I think are totally like. There's no issue there, right? Like you can't have any issue with those. Um, so Batman, uh, Batman was a year later. That was all. Yeah, that was sixty dollars when it came out. So, I mean, there is precedent. I guess you know. maybe the frequency, the, just the frequency that it happens now is, is the other issue probably. Just that it happens so often. And maybe there's also something to be said for like, hey, like bringing Wolfenstein or bringing Skyrim to Nintendo platform for the first time is a bigger deal than like bringing a, a former Nintendo game to a new Nintendo platform at $60. Sure. Hmm. All good points. I hope I hope we get selects eventually. It's just it's just way too early. Yeah. All right, let's go to Brundies. He says I think they should repackage one two switch, similar to how they've done with Breath of the Wild and now upcoming Splatoon two starter edition, or included with an Nintendo Labo kit. I think everyone should try one two switch. It is worth at least a couple hours of entertainment, but the price is too high. Would it be crazy to have a repackaged one two switch at nineteen ninety nine for holiday twenty eighteen as a like, hey, this is a quality game to pick up for Switch at a cheap price after you've already spent sixty on Pokemon. Yeah, I'm all about playing one to switch for twenty dollars, yes. Yeah, uh my issue with the game is never the game itself, because you've mentioned that we've had fun with that when we recorded the the stuff we did at launch. It was a really good time. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah, include it with the Switch. That'd be great. I, I mean, with Labo, it just doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. Not, like, there's no connection there. But why not just package package it in with the Switch? I think that could be cool. The only issue, and I'll just point this out, just in, just so that it's, it's completely clear, the repackages are still retail price. So I don't know that Nintendo would be too keen on repackaging one to Switch at twenty, but that would sure be smart. And hey, 
There's no rules about repackaging. You can repackage it. Um, you know, or or what if they did? Here, here's something, and, and this might be crazy. Um, let me look up the cost of this right now, just currently on Amazon. Uh, I got a, I got a good idea for Nintendo here. I'm just gonna give them all our good ideas. Okay, so Joy-Con are eighty dollars, right? Mm-hmm. What if you made a hundred dollar pack that gave you Joy-Con plus one two switch? Sure. What what was the game on Wii that did that? Where they they were like selling Wii Motion Plus with Wii Play? It? Yeah. Or was it Wii, Wii Sports? Play, Wii, a... Was it Wii Sports Resort? Is that what it was? Wii Play had like a Wii Mote pack, but Wii Sports Resort because Wii Play was not the Motion Plus. Wii Wii Sports Resort may have had. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we, a long we time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yes, twenty dollars one two switch. Some variety, whether it's in a Joy-Con bundle or just by itself. You don't really need extra Joy-Con for one two switch, but like it's a it's a fun way to like tie in to, to a party thing. I don't know. Sheldon wraps us up this week. This is actual Sheldon, by the way, from Splatoon two. Uh, next, you guys should do top five games to play when you're stuck at home alone with a stomach virus. <laughs> Aw, poor oh, Sheldon. He ate oh, too many barnacles. Oh, no. Oh. I do like this idea, though. Instead of doing, like, top five Switch games to play with your friend, top five Switch games, you know, for a Nintendo fan, top ten indie games. Like, let's just get weird with it. Top five Switch games to play when you're, like, deathly ill alone at home. Top five Switch games to play once you failed climbing Mount Everest for the sixth time. Top five Switch games to play when you burn your toast and your mom yells at you. Top five Switch games to play after you put your foot inside a George Foreman grill because you wanted breakfast bacon. Top five Switch games to play when you have a first date and you think you're doing well and then it falls apart. Top five Switch games for when Zach is bad at examples. All right. Thank you so much for watching Comment Force. 49 of them in the bag. Like I said, next week is 50. If you have any favorite moments, let them know. Let us let, let them let, let the people know. Let someone else know. Don't let us know. We down, down below. <laughs> but then please, after you let them know, please copy and paste it onto our onto this thread. Uh, um, and also stay tuned for the surprise. It's pretty freaking epic. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I cannot wait to share it. But before we get out of here, Gabe, as we do now, it's time for life advice. Zach, I don't know if I have any this week. You're just a, a shell of a man? No, not necessarily. I just I kind of forgot to think of one, and I don't want to just like make one up on the spot. All right. Mine is going to be about planning. I think it's really important, and I'm not the greatest at this, so I'm trying to work on it myself, is to wake up with a purpose and wake up with some sort of schedule. It doesn't have to be hour by hour, but at least with a, a checklist of some things to get done or at least with a mental organization of your day, don't just show up for life. You know, sometimes that's all you can do. But if you're past that, if you're at a place where you can put effort in, make a plan for your days. Don't let them go to waste. Make sure every day counts. Make every Monday count. Make every Wednesday count. Make every Saturday count. And whether it's fun things or productive things or just spreading a little bit of love and kindness or getting something done for yourself or making sure that you do follow through and clean your kitchen, have a plan and put something into place for each day so you don't just show up. And like I said, I don't really have any advice. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't think of anything, and I don't want to just throw something at you. Zach's was really good, so that makes up for mine. I'll give you a second piece of advice uh, for, for Gabe, and it relates directly to Gabe's lack of advice. And that advice is think of don't advice. feel like you have nothing productive to share with the world. Don't feel like you don't have a contribution to make. Just put your ideas out there. Put yourself out there and see what happens. What's going to happen next week, though, is another comment for us. So thanks so much for being a part of this series. Thanks so much for being a part of this channel. Almost 50 episodes strong and a whole lot of Switch fans strong. We love all of you. We cannot wait to share more next week. Until that time, for myself, Gabe, and his missing advice, Switch Force, out.